Hi, this is Aaron from Sibling Rivalry, and today we're going to talk about cameras and developing your own film in your bathroom. Keep your camera ready, and you'll get the kind of picture only you can take. So the camera that we're going to be talking about today is this Kodak 620 Hawkeye Jr., which is actually one of the first commercially successful and available cameras. It came to market in the early 1920s and continued until the 1980s, I believe. So this particular model should be from somewhere between the early 1920s and early 1930s. It was hard to find an exact date, but yeah, this camera is pretty interesting in the fact that it's very similar to a pinhole camera. So it actually has a lens in it, which you might be able to see in there if I flick the shutter. But if I do this exposure pull, you can actually delay the shutter enough that you can actually see the lens in there. So let me see if I can get that close enough to the camera. So there you go and I can actually see right through the camera through the viewing window back here, which isn't actually meant as a viewfinder. It's actually meant to show where your film is during the exposure process. So as you feed the film through with this advancement reel, the window back here will display which exposure you're currently on. Um, now, unlike a modern camera, it doesn't have a mechanical mechanism I guess is the best way to put it that limits where the exposure is so it does take a bit of practice to get the exposure in the right pane but as long as you're consistent with where you have the film rolled there shouldn't really be any issues with that so other features this camera has which made it very popular is it actually has a prism based viewfinder here so as I'm looking at this I can actually see the light over me coming through and bouncing off onto the top of this little view window there. So I believe that that is pretty much everything there is to know about this camera, other than the fact that it uses 620 film, which is no longer manufactured by Kodak, but they actually manufacture a film that is the exact same dimensions, just with a slightly different reel. And that film is 120 millimeter film, which is still in production today and is very popular for medium format cameras. What I did to actually get the film to work in this camera was I took the film, which comes on like a loose spool, and I sanded the edges of the spool for about 15 minutes to get them thin enough so that it fits in here. And it worked like a dream. So because we're developing black and white film, we actually need a developer that works with black and white film in particular. And while you can make your own using coffee and vitamin C or a few other different chemicals that you can do at home, I actually wanted to go with something a little simpler and that would work right out of the box and essentially was guaranteed to give me some result. So what I did was I purchased Cinestill Films DF96, which the DF stands for Developer and Fixer, because this is a monobath solution. So typically with film development, you have to use multiple baths for different steps in the process. With color film, you can use multiple chemical baths to get the different color ways to work properly on the film development. With this, because it's black and white, it's monochromatic, it really only needs one developer. And what it does is it actually takes the silver emulsion that's on the film and what's exposed of the silver emulsion gets turned into an actual a actual silver compound on the film backing and what hasn't been exposed gets washed away by the fixative in here and i'm actually using a patterson brand universal development tank and this is great because it allows you to develop in broad daylight. All you have to do is open up the canister. You take out this little agitation stem, unlock the top here, which is actually double 
serves as a funnel as well as a light blocker to prevent light from coming in. And you take out these spools. And the cool thing about these spools is they have a ratcheting motion. So you ratchet it and it actually loads the film onto it. Now for the film that we're working on, we're actually going to need to extend these because it, by default it's only set for 35 millimeter film. And we're going to go for 120 millimeter film, like I said before. So we need to expand these. So I'm actually going to go off camera and develop this film. And because it's the first time for me developing film on this particular camera, it's going to be a bit of a surprise. I have no idea how this is going to look, but I'll be back and I'll have the film developed. I realized once I got into the bathroom and loaded up the film that the whole point of this tank is that you can develop in daylight. So I'm actually going to show you guys what the process is like once the film is loaded. So one thing I do want to add while I was loading the film, with 120mm film, it actually has a backing paper that you have to remove. Usually it's just taped on with some masking tape. So I just peeled it off and removed the masking tape and then loaded the film onto the spool in here. I'd show you the spool, but that would kind of count, be counter to the point of not exposing it to daylight. So this is a pretty simple process. So what I'm going to do is start out with this developer and usually they say to use a specific amount based on the film that you're developing. There's actually inscriptions on the bottom here of the Patterson tank that say how much fluid to use per film and whatnot. So in this case, you can also just kind of wing it. So I'm going to just put some developer in there. And it goes right in and close this off for right now. So you're going to use this agitation stick. It actually interlocks in there. You just twist it a few times to get that going and you tap this to make sure there's no air bubbles stuck on the film. You can take this guy out and set him aside. Let's set him over here. Put this lid on and make sure that it is watertight. So essentially just push it down all around. And it takes about three minutes to develop film. So what we're going to do is just invert. And you don't want to keep inversion because the way that this developer works, it can actually overdevelop or underdevelop based on agitation as well as temperature. So I'm kind of winging it because this is my first time working with this film. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, to be completely honest, but just kind of go by ear and agitate every now and again. They usually say agitate for 10 seconds every minute or so. So we'll go and do that. Lots of fun. So I think we should actually be good with this now. I'm just kind of going off my own feeling here. So, all right. We're at, you can actually reuse this chemical up to 16 times is what they say. And some people have said you can use it a lot more than that, but I don't want to tempt fate. I'm going to pour it out. You can see that it's turned a nice green color, which means that it has removed that undeveloped silver. All right. So I'm just going to make sure we get as much out as we can. And we're actually going to rinse the film afterwards. I'm just going to set this aside here. Now, you probably want to think more ahead than what I did and put a tablecloth or something down so that you're not getting this all over your table. 
Thankfully, it's not gonna stain the table as long as you wipe it away fairly quick. So I'm just gonna set this off to the side and we're actually gonna pour some water that I have here in this bowl into the Patterson tank. And like before, you can just kind of eyeball it. They say just to pour into the sides of the funnels and that's generally good practice whenever you're doing anything with chemicals. Always pour to the side of a funnel so that you don't get any splash back and you don't get a lot of aeration in there. Now, I have filled this up almost to the lip, so you do want some air in there because you're agitating to clean. That's how cleaning works, it's agitation. So, I've got the lid back on there, it's sealed nice and tight. We're gonna invert, and you just do this as long as you feel that it's necessary. It really is based on preference. Now I probably should have grabbed a second bowl to dump the water into so I can put more water into it. So we're called sibling rivalry because we're actually a sibling team. My sister's usually behind the camera and she took my uh, cue and actually grabbed me a bowl so that I can dump this out and put in some fresh water. So we're gonna do that. Oop, a bit of a burp there. And this is gonna have a nice, lovely greenish. Ooh, it's like a nice aquamarine almost. Pour that out. And they say to do this until the water comes out clear. So we're gonna try and do that. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. One eternity later. Okay, so minor mishap. The bowl slipped out of my hand and got water everywhere. Thankfully, it was just the water and not the chemical residue because that would be not fun <laughs> and probably would have dyed everything that lovely shade of aquamarine. So we're going to get back to washing the film. So I'm going to be extra careful and pour the water in. We're gonna do smaller amounts of water, I think, this time, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> a little cautious, a little apprehensive, and I might be running out of t-shirts. <laughs> so, all right, we got the lid back on. Uh, rinse. Classic sibling rivalry stuff. All right, so. Now the one complaint I have about these Patterson tanks is as you might have seen, the lid doesn't go on quite as easily as you'd expect. Now it is rigid, which is good because you want it to be really stuck on there when it's stuck on there, but that also means it's a pain in the ass to get it actually onto the thing. So, we're gonna dump this out. See what the color looks like now. Seems to be mostly clear coming out. We'll do one more rinse. And careful not to drop it this time. I've got faith that that worked out. Let's pour this out one last time. And yeah, that's coming out crystal clear, I would say. Okie dokie. So, now... this off. I'm just going to set this down here. And we have film. All right. 
So now you can actually see what I was talking about, the way that this works. So you twist it and it kind of goes on, but to get it off of the spool, you just slide away. Or you can actually, I believe, even disassemble it, but I'm not too worried about that. So it looks like there was some chemical residue there, but I am seeing some pictures that are actually developed on here. So that's cool. It looks like we've got one picture. Oh, no. Two pictures. It's supposed to have eight exposures. And like I said, this is the first time for me with this. Uh, it looks like there was some chemical residue left in the tank from the last time. So I'll definitely have to make sure I rinse it a little better. But I would say that this is generally success. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is hang this up to dry and then we'll see if we can digitize some of this and see what it shows us. All right. Eventually. Well, it's been a few hours now. The film's all dried out and I've actually gone and digitized a few with my iPhone. Uh, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Uh, and also hit that bell for the notification because apparently that's what you have to do these days. Uh, if you want to see how the photos turned out, Val will actually be posting the videos to our Instagram account. And that will be linked down below. So hopefully you liked the video. At the very least, hopefully you enjoyed me spilling water everywhere and messing up. Well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.